Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Neo. In this video, I am working on my Ready Guana practice hand. We are gonna be starting some Valentine's sets. Um, I haven't used my practice hand in a while, since maybe before Christmas, so I was excited to at least play around and um, play with some ideas that I had in my mind. Um, I started off with some natural coffin tips, but they did have a little bit of a rounding on the free edge. So I just went in with an 80-80 file and straightened those up and blended them on the sides a little bit. Now I'm just adding a small bead of clear acrylic on the nail plate here. When I added the double tips, um, there's just a, a lip there that I didn't feel like blending um, just because it's a practice set. So I'm just using that acrylic to give a smooth foundation to the nail. Um, and then we can get started. The first color that I'm going to start with is by Sugar and Cream. This whole set pretty much is by Sugar and Cream. Um, this is Eggnog. I've used this color already on myself in another video. I will link that in the cards for you. And it's a really gorgeous nude kind of peachy nail plate color. Um, it has beautiful gold and silver shimmer in it. So it's not sparkles. They're very, very fine. So tiny little shimmers. And it glows in the dark. This color glows green. I will show you a clip of that later at the end of the video, but I'm going to be covering this nail in a full um, in a full coverage of this color. I'm just building up coverage and color here, and um, yeah, that's just what's happening on this finger. So as this acrylic is setting, I decided to place a gold heart charm on the tip of the nail. This is just a charm that I got from Amazon, I believe. It comes in a set of, it's like a little wheel of gold and silver charms, random shapes and sizes. So I just thought that this would be cute to place on the nail because gold is gonna be the accent um, metal, I guess, of this set. And I thought it was really just cute to place that there just to remind us that it is a Valentine's set. I'm going in with the same eggnog color on the ring finger and we are going to be doing a french cut diagonal on this nail but i will be just doing it with my brush um, this is how i do it when i'm being lazy i just place that cuticle bead and i kind of push the acrylic in the direction of where i want that french cut to go so i'm doing a diagonal from the left to the bottom right and you'll see eventually i'll be taking the body of the brush and just kind of sliding like that sliding the acrylic over where i want it to kind of flow so i'm letting gravity help here but I'm just guiding the acrylic with the body of the brush down in that diagonal motion and then continuing to pat down in that direction. So that's basically what I'm doing. You can um, do a full nail and scrape it off. I've done that. You can use an X-Acto blade. I've done that. I use sometimes an extendo tip, but this was just a lazy um, method for me because I knew I was going to cover that French line anyway. And I think it came out kind of nice just, you know, <laughs> just knowing that I just used my brush. It wasn't a big deal to me, um, but that's just one way to do it and then um, I'm gonna add another bead around the cuticle just to build up for coverage and then to make the height a little bit better Thank you. 
now we are getting into the colors of this set it is a neon set and the star of the show is this color from sugar and cream it is called fatal love i actually talked about it in a recent haul video i will link that in the cards for you to check out sugar and cream has really really gorgeous um and great um, neon powders. I find sometimes when you are using neons there's so much pigment in it that you end up with a chalky finish or it's too much pigment and it's really runny but this is like the perfect consistency and there's no marbling and you get the full impact of the color. The only thing that would have made this color like fantastic is if it glowed in the dark but you know it doesn't. So this color is called Fatal Love by Sugar and Cream and I'm going to be doing an ombre with this color. The color that I'm going to use on the cuticle is a two color ombre so the color I'm using on the cuticle area is another sugar and cream called tater tot so this is a really nice kind of um, berry colored fuchsia and it has gorgeous gold shimmer in it so it's really really pretty and these sugar and cream acrylics ombre so well into one another the formula is fantastic and as you can see I am just getting a flawless um, ombre I'm gonna place another bead closer just because I wanted a little bit more purple at this point there was too much orange and I wanted there to be more of the pinky purple color so I'm just gonna place another bead and blend that down and it's gonna be virtually seamless um, so I'm gonna be doing this on the pinky and on the middle finger And check out the ombre. The ombre is really, really, really gorgeous. Now for that French cut area, I'm going to be doing another ombre. So I'm starting off with the Fatal Love neon orange color. And I am just, because the French cut area was so small, in hindsight, if I did this again, I would have made the French cut area a little bit um, deeper just so that we get more of the color but it's not a big deal um, it still came out really pretty I'm applying that fatal love orange color on the tip and blending it back up and then I'm gonna apply the fuchsia tater tot color um, in the, the tiny little pocket there and blend it down so we do have an ombre in that French cut area as well
And this is what we are looking like after application. Just a really, really pretty set so far. The colors, um, when I chose the orange, I was like, oh man, it's gonna be too bright, but the purple definitely tones it down and makes it just a little bit more wearable for me, per se. On the pinky, I wanted to add another charm. So I have another heart charm. It's a little bit different than the first one, but I'm applying it on this nail on the cuticle area. Just one tiny little bead of clear acrylic to get it to stay. Now I'm gonna be using the Two Guys Chameleon Flakes. This is number six. It is the pure gold one. And as I was opening it, I dropped it on the floor. So um, I didn't stop the video. I was just like really annoyed, but I just kept going. And I'm just using the product that fell on my hand. It like rolled under the table. There was glitter everywhere. And it, I couldn't even get it up out of the carpet. I was just so annoyed. Um, so that was a waste. But the chameleon flakes are really, really gorgeous. They're different from regular gold foil in that the normal gold foil that you see people using has a lot of that texture, like aluminum kind of texture. The chameleon flakes are silky smooth, like they are very, very brassy and extremely shiny. They don't have that crinkly kind of texture that you normally see with foil. Um, and you get just a, a deeper, shinier reflection. So I thought that I wanted to use this instead of regular foil, but regular foil would work here as well. Um, now I'm just going in on that second ombre nail and just adding small amounts of the foil just to give a little bit more of a hint of gold since our accent metal is gold for this set. And I just used a monomer on my brush to adhere these um, to the nail, nothing crazy. As you can see, I covered more of the nude side on that French just so that we got more impact with the, um, the ombre on that French cut. Now I'm using my Young Nails Core Clear. I'm back to using it. I do have that huge tub. I think I bought the 660 grams, so that's probably gonna last me like another five years, right? Um, so I'm using that to um, cap all of my nails, nothing crazy, just um, making sure that everything is encapsulated, especially those tips and then making sure that we cover our ombres that we work so hard for.
And here we are after clear capping. I did my best to maintain the shape that we wanted um, and keep the free edge not bulky. Now I'm gonna go in with an 80-80 um, hand file. And normally I don't hand file um, tips when I'm working on my ready guana practice hand. They wobble around. I do not secure my tips into um, the hand. I just kind of slide them in and work on them that way. So they are wobbling guys. So I figured I would just hand file to smooth. Um, the application of the clear cap was not extremely rough so I didn't have to do too much. I'm just cleaning the sidewalls, smoothing the tops of the nails, and then sharpening that free edge. Um, hopefully, but it's, it's just rough. It just wobbles around. I did once try to um, secure the tip to the red iguana hand like to glue it in um, but getting it off was so stressful and I kind of ripped the silicone a little bit so I just you know stick them in there but it makes it um, really difficult to hand file but I figured I'd get that on film for you see how it's sliding out I figured I'd get that on film for you guys because um, normally I just I would just cut the footage and then take them out file them on my own and then slide them back in another thing that I don't like um, another reason I don't like doing this is because these silicone hands hold on to dust like crazy um, and because the skin tone of my red iguana hand is darker you can see all that white dust all over the hand like I am constantly washing this hand or um, wiping it down because the dust is real it is so intense so um, I mean I did it for you guys but it was rough as you can see this tip is like gone um, but yeah I'm just smoothing out the surface of the nail you'll see me occasionally running my finger over the surface of the nail just to feel any lumps or anything like that but it wasn't too bad um, after this, I'm gonna go in with a buffing block and then buff just to smooth a little bit more because the 80-80 is pretty rough and does scratch up the nail significantly. And here we are after I've cleaned. I've wiped this hand down and as you can see there's still dust on the silicone hand but the set looks really really pretty. The ombre is just so soft and delicious. Um, so now I'm going in with a glossy base coat. So I plan on going matte for these nails and because I use that 80-80 hand file I know from previous experience that if I go in with a matte top coat right away without using a base coat to fill in all of those scratches and ridges you will see it underneath that matte top coat. So I'm just using the Beatles gel base coat um, to just basically fill in any scratches that I can see and you kind of get an idea of what this set would look like if it was glossy. It's really really pretty. You can see the charm really nicely. The gold um, in the set looks really really cool but I am going to go matte because I'm a matte girl through and through. So I'm just giving it a nice juicy coat of um, base coat and then I'm going to cure for 30 seconds. And it really is a beautiful set, glossy. The ombre is everything, guys. And this ombre is so perfect for summer. I can so see myself doing this again for another summer set, but for now, it's for Valentine's. So I'm pushing all the other nails away because we, the focus is gonna be on this ombre nail. So I decided to draw, hand draw some graffiti. I was looking online and typed in the word graffiti and love and saw this really gorgeous image come up and I was like, I'm gonna try and emulate that on this set. So I'm starting off with some white gel paint. I'm not using gel polish because I feel like gel paint is a little bit thicker in consistency and doesn't spread. Another reason why I placed the base coat is because I wanted it to have a smooth surface if I had gone in with this gel polish over the scratchy um, nail that we just buffed then if there were any ridges where that gel pol gel polish the gel paint touched it would have spread throughout that crack so that's another reason to add a gel base coat if you are going to be doing some hand painting just because it allows the surface to be completely smooth for the gel to sit exactly where you put it so I'm using a thin liner brush that I got in a set from Amazon I love these brushes I use them all the time Time. on the other ends of the brushes are dotting tools so you get a variety of sizes and thicknesses of dots and a variety of lengths and thicknesses of liner brushes so I'm using the black one it just worked out perfectly here and I'm drawing these bubble letters to spell the word love now 
I should have, when finished, this L cured it, right? So that's the moral of the story. Cure after every letter, guys, because your girl, as you can see, didn't cure and started drawing the O. And luckily, I didn't make any mistakes, but you will see in a bit that I did make a mistake um, a little bit later. So how I'm drawing it is I'm trying to make sure that the letter that I drew previously is overlapping the next letter. So as you can see, I didn't let the O touch that L. And I'm kind. To, I'm trying. I'm trying to be careful in not letting the um, letter touch each other, so that you can see the um, the ombre underneath each or in between each letter. And I drew a heart inside of the O just to remind us that it's a Valentine's Day set. And um, I'm just filling it in with this liner brush. So I'm being extremely careful. Um, sometimes you'll see me rest my pinky on the nail just so that I have enough support, so that I'm not you know doing anything crazy. But at this point, I was like, Nina, you need to cure. And then this happened. I basically swiped the nail on the LED lamp and I was like, you see, had I cured the first time, this wouldn't have been an issue. So if you're gonna do something like this, cure after every letter, guys, like don't be like me. I just took a brush with some acetone and wiped off the excess, thank goodness, right? and carefully filled in the scratch and then I'm gonna cure for a full 30 seconds in between. So moving forward, I'm gonna cure in between every single letter. Now I'm going in and drawing a bubble V and these are just bubble letters, nothing crazy. I'm trying to keep that space in between the V and the O. As you can see, I'm giving it a little bit of a space to show that the O is in front of that V letter and then I'm gonna fill it in with the white gel paint. Um, uh, it wasn't difficult to draw the letters. I was just really nervous because I didn't have really a place to rest my hand So I was being extra extra careful with the pressure I didn't want to make a mistake But the beautiful thing about working with gel instead of regular polish is that you can cure in between So if I had messed up on that V I could have gone in with some alcohol or acetone and just wiped it off and continued from there Going in and drawing the E now making sure to not connect the letters um, There's a space in between the V and the E and then I'm gonna make sure that it looks good and do a final cure. So this is a pigment set that I got from the two guys. Honestly, you can get them from anywhere. Note to you out there, be careful opening your pigments. Over the summer last year, I actually did uh, a client's set with some pigment and dropped it on my, I dropped everything on my carpet. It was neon orange and it was a dark gray carpet. And to this day, that orange is still in the carpet. So like shout out to y'all that the pigment is so intense, but you need to be careful. As you can see, I chose a fuchsia pink a neon orange and a bright highlighter yellow and I'm using just a fluffy paintbrush that's a little bit more fluffy the bristles are not densely packed and I'm just going to be kind of pressing it into the um, gel paint that's there the gel paint does have an adhesion layer on top after curing so I'm just using that to stick the gel I said the gel the pigment into and I'm going to be ombre yellow to orange to the hot pink over all of the letters across horizontally Now I'm taking that orange and I'm using a very, very light hand. I'm trying not to pick up too much pigment because I don't want it to go where I don't want it to go. Um, and I am trying to overlap the, the yellow with the orange a little bit to kind of give it an ombre. Honestly, once you place that pigment, it kind of sticks to the gel. So ombre, you just kind of have to dig it in and try and get it over that previous color. But I think it came out not too bad. The next color that I'm gonna be using is the hot pink. And then I'm going to try and blend that into the orange. I am blowing on the nail in between to get rid of excess pigment that's kind of just sitting around um, just because I don't want it to accidentally go in an area that I don't want it to be in. So here is the hot pink and I'm just trying to burnish it into that um, white gel and then over the orange to kind of give it an ombre look. Thank you. 
Now I am taking the same liner brush, but I'm using a black gel paint. I want this to kind of stand out a bit in a graffiti style and there would be an outline for the most part. I'm trying to add not really an outline, but more of a shadow. So um, I'm trying to make it so that the shadow is underneath and a little bit towards the left of the lettering. So underneath all of the horizontal pieces, you will see a black shadow and then a little bit to the left of, the sh of each letter you're gonna, or item or shape, you're gonna see a a black shadow kind of like if the light was coming from the top right that means the shadow would be towards the bottom left so I'm just using that liner brush and just drawing on the bottom left and a little bit to the left of every single shape that you see a black line to make it seem like there's a shadow pretty much nothing crazy this was um, extremely nerve-wracking because I didn't want to mess up the pigment the pigment honestly is just sitting on top of that gel I did cure in between but because I cured the white gel paint before it's not like the gel is now stuck to it if I did something crazy and had to wipe the pigment would wipe off so I was just being extra extra careful and um, taking my time to do this now So as you can see, this L has a shadow on the bottom and to the left of the shape. And I'm just making it a little bit thicker on the bottom to make it look like the, the highlight is coming from the top right. I don't know what happened here. But yeah, I'm just gonna be doing that for basically every single shape. And that includes drawing the black line in between each letter as well, because they if the shadow is to the left, then that means um, that that would be in that um, in-between space that I left um, blank when drawing the letters in the first place. After I'm done with this, I'm gonna cure for a full 30 seconds to lock the black in place. And I think the black just helps it to stand out a little bit and makes it just look a little bit more graphic. Next, I'm gonna go in with the same brush and I'm gonna go back to the white gel and I'm just gonna be drawing in some random highlights. So sometimes you couldn't really see the highlights on film, but in person, the highlights just make it look even more graphic and even more graffiti-like. Um, I thought it was just a nice touch to the bubble letters, trying to just make them pop a little bit more. I thought it was really fun. After applying these simple white lines, I'm going to cure for another 30 seconds and then um, use my dotting tool in the white gel paint and um, add some white dots around everything just to give it a little bit more interest. So here is the graffiti that we just hand drawed with the pigment. Next step is to use a lint-free wipe and to get rid of any pigment that might have fallen onto the other nails. It definitely did. Every time I put it in the LED light, you could see it glowing. Now I'm going in with my favorite Beatles top coat. The matte top coat is so gorgeous, but this container is so small. It's only seven mil when most gel polishes are about 15 to 20. It's insanely tiny. Beatles, make the bottles bigger, please. So I'm going over all of the nails with the matte top coat. So here's what I would suggest in terms of using pigment like this. The matte top coat eventually started wiping off the pigment. So what I would have done is done a thin glossy layer over the pigment just to lock it in place and then gone over it with a matte coat. Cause you'll see over the V and the E, maybe because I was being a little heavy handed with the um, brush, I did wipe away some of the pigment, but it wasn't too big a deal um, for me, but it is something that I noted. So here's a shot of the set. Remember that eggnog color from Sugar and Cream does glow in the dark. So this is what that looks like glowing in the dark. And here's a shot of the set, super fun. And I just enjoyed hand painting and working on this ombre. The colors are really, really pretty. I hope you like this video. Like if you do, subscribe for more. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.